it's always the easy go-to thing for an I Irish film is like Irish fiddle music. Mm -hmm. Whereas like an American film, it could be anything. It could be jazz, it could be Appalachian, it could be pop, it could be, you know, there isn't that. But imagine if you're making a film and it can only be this kind of music. That's crazy. When Brendan comes in and makes the threat about the fingers, I didn't know that that was going to happen. <laughs> what do you mean? You didn't know it was going to happen? I hadn't plotted it out. And so it was like 20 pages into the writing of it. And Brendan came in and made the threat. And that was news to me. Whoa. <laughs> you just blew someone's mind. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't do treatments and I don't plot things out. But then but once, that, once he said that, it's like, we've but, got but, lo loads of places to go after that. But break that down. So you're writing it. He walks in. And then you, you needed him to say something extreme? The logical thing would be, I'm going to fuck you up if you don't stop. Yeah. So to do the illogical thing is, I'm going to fuck me up if you don't stop. <laughs> Doing the opposite at any stage of a script is interesting sometimes. Also, the idea that Brendan and I sort of came up with during rehearsals was that he's gone through the worst of the despair. And the whole point of him making that threat, first saying he doesn't want to be friends and then making that threat, he's gone through that process. He's gone through the suicidal uh, thing. And he's realized that the only way I'm going to save my life is to set this story in process with all those threats, with all that darkness, seeming darkness. Mm -hmm. But this is actually going to save my life. So if it takes one finger to save my life, that's worth it. Even if it takes five, it's worth it. The rainbow like wasn't scripted. It just popped up, and we kind of rushed to, to so get it that, it's a real that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, and even in the edit, it's like this is too up. Irish. No one's going to believe this shit. So we literally I, wait, that's real. I, yeah, I yeah, swore yeah. that was a. We literally ran back and forth wow. to do that like ten times in a row, and we picked. There were two like really when it was like the most beautiful, clearest uh, of it. It's like one of those things when it's like extras and you're dependent on, on them and they're like fucking up. And it's like, <laughs> it's a rainbow, it's gonna be gone in like two yeah. minutes. But the weather helped us more than anything. Because if it had been like a horrible summer, it would have been a much more gray, dreary kind of movie. And the reason it works, I think, is the beauty of Ireland, the weather being so perfect, uh, and the darkness of the story. Carter Burwell, yeah. he said, the story involves an Irish fiddler on an Irish island during the Irish Civil War. And I said, it couldn't, I couldn't see any reason the music wouldn't be Irish. Martin made it clear that he absolutely hated that idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Talk about directing this score. Um, well, it's always the easy go-to thing for an I Irish film is like Irish fiddle music. Mm -hmm. Whereas like an American film, it could be anything. It could be jazz, it could be Appalachian, it could be pop, it could be, you know, there isn't that. But imagine if you're making a film and it can only be this kind of music. That's crazy. Knowing also that the Brendan tune was going to be an Irish thing anyway. And that's written by Brendan Gleeson, by the way. Um, I saw that in the credits, yeah. So I was doing a, uh, you know, temporary score using a lot of Indonesian <laughs> uh, gamelan music, which is kind of those strange... Um, xylophone-like uh, things, plus a lot of sort of found classical music pieces. Carlos sort of incorporated the idea of that weirdness into the instruments he found. And then a lot of it sounds almost fairy tale like I guess, and fable-like. And, and I think he kind of leaned into that very much. You know, most of your plays, pretty much all your films, is this idea of an innocent dying and the guilt that comes up around that. And I was wondering if that's something that you consciously dig into, whether that just appears or whether that. I think it just appears. Um, I don't think. I don't think it's ever planned, really. Uh, I kind of had a feeling the donkey was going to get it, but uh, <laughs> it was just too cute to survive. <laughs> <laughs> um, isn't there a Chekhov thing where if you have a donkey in the first act, it has to die in the first <laughs> It's a gun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, but, but so, yeah, maybe I should stop repeating myself. I've got a lesson. 
no more dead innocence in the next one. Oh, no. <laughs> Unless it's funny or... Uh... <laughs>